everybody. Welcome back to Tavian's World of Reptiles. I hope you are all doing well and taking care of yourselves. So I'm just uh, checking in on Cruella here. She was at the front of her viv. Um, and she hasn't actually asked to come out in a long time. And she's not necessarily begging today. But I uh, decided to just go ahead and open the doors and allow her the opportunity to come out if that's something that she is interested in. She's looking good. Uh, yesterday morning, Shere Khan here was doing a lot of begging, but it was an early morning for me. So getting in, letting him out at the time before leaving for work, I just didn't have enough time. Uh, but he doesn't seem to be begging too much this morning. But I'll just go ahead and open the door and allow him to come out if that's something he's interested in. And, of course, Rumpelstiltskin is, as always, right here at the door, ready to go. Rumpelstiltskin, you're such a wanderer. You're forever wanting to be out and about. Forever wanting to be out and about. Look at that immediate climb. So, guys, today... Uh, today's video is about... Uh, oh, not up there right now. Not up there right now. So I wanted to talk to you guys about um, what, like fostering snakes and opening up, uh, you know, rescues and and doing all that. Because I, I was watching a video. Uh, hey, anti P, you want to come out too? So I was watching a video um, about a person who was essentially complaining about uh how it it's not so easy to do uh rescues and they tried to start a non-profit uh and realized very quickly that uh that was not like, clearly not a thing that is as is easily done as they had expected um you know and and it's not you know, we, we, you know, we get, you often see people, you know, attempting to rescue some reptile or another on these, uh, various different social media settings, um, and, uh, trying to do this, uh, reptile rescue when, um, that's easier said than done, um, cause it does, it costs and, um, nonprofits are not easy to get going because, you know, first of all, you've got to find uh, people who are majorly invested in these animals as much as you are and who would like to see them in better care. And unfortunately, as big as our community is, it's not necessarily growing. I mean, it's not necessarily so huge that uh, just anybody who chooses to start a nonprofit is going to flourish. Um, you know, there's for many people, snakes are not a priority unfortunately reptiles are not uh a priority and so getting people invested in you know trying to help individuals rescue these animals is not it's not so easily done and so i guess it's just what i'm i'm, I'm trying to talk about today is just uh it's just like realizing that if you're thinking about starting a nonprofit or a rescue of any sort you got to think about what that means, like, and you got to think about whether or not you can um, afford that because uh, the things that come with a reptile rescue is not cheap. I personally would have loved to do uh, a reptile rescue, but I know I can't afford it, and I already know that I don't have the resources for people who are going to help uh, fund that. You know, I just don't have it. I don't know. I don't know enough people. Uh, there are several bigger organizations out there that are getting a lot of people's monies, too. So, um, you know, expecting something that I start reptile res rescue-wise to flourish is just a little unrealistic. That being said, um, you know, there are so many things to consider when deciding to do a reptile expo. Like, it's, I mean, not reptile expo, a reptile rescue. Um, can you afford this initial startup? of a reptile rescue because it's more than just opening your home to animals you have to be able to supply these animals with whatever they need you need to be able to have 
extra enclosures ready to go, extra food ready to go. If you're taking in lizards uh, or something like that, you're going to need extra lights. Uh, that's UV lights as well as heating lights, you know, and all of those things are things to consider and none of those things are cheap. Grumple, this is not your home. This is not your home. You can go back that way. You can go up. Shere Khan, that is not your home. That belongs to Cruella. You can go back up that way. Oh, no, no. Okay, you can come this way. You can come this way. So, oh, everybody's falling, falling. Things are falling. All right, so anyway. So, you know, if you're thinking about starting a reptile rescue, you have to be willing to automatically come out of pocket for that. Reptile rescues are not cheap especially if you don't already have a, a funding plan in, you know, in, in active, you know, cause, because we, we expect to just be able to have a big heart and uh, welcome these lovely creatures into our home. But if we don't have the resources to properly care for them, are we actually rescuing them or are we actually sticking them in a equally um, as unhealthy living situation where they're still not getting the things that they need. Do we just take them from one um, bad home and stick them into another? So if you are not capable of doing a rescue properly, meaning having all the necessary food and enclosures for these snakes, if only no matter how temporary their stay is, then you are not in a position to do a rescue. And I think it's a little unfair uh, to try to, you know, call out those who uh, are trying to help you uh, for not doing enough um, or, you know, for making anybody try to feel bad for not helping this uh, reptile rescue to flourish because it's an expensive thing. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of people that are invested in the lives of these reptiles the way we are. It takes a lot more uh outreach to find people who are going to support this cause and then of course if you're a small town or a small time rescuer like myself would be or like this particular individual that i saw um on youtube complaining about this then well you just gonna have to expect that things are not going to happen as smoothly for you um you're not going to have as much support you're going to have to really take time to build your um your reputation you, uh, you know, not everybody is just going to give their money away to somebody who says that they're rescuing reptiles. You know, you got to really show people what you're you're putting into these animals. You got to show them what you have already got uh, support wise for these animals and show them your knowledge and all of that. And without it, you're just this person who is claiming to take on reptiles, um, but really doesn't have a lot of uh, history to back up that cause, and nobody's just going to throw money to that. So reptile rescues are hard. They're not easy, by far. They're not in any way, shape, or form easy, um, but they are possible. It's just you have to be patient, and you have to figure out what you need to do for yourself uh, to make that reptile rescue uh, flourish, because it's not going to on its own. Move that. It's not going to on its own. Uh, it needs help, um, and in, in initially it needs a initial. There's a very big initial financial investment in starting a reptile rescue. You're gonna knock all sorts of things down up here. Sure, come on. Look at you. Look at you. So go back down there for a second. Okay, just like reset, reset. So, ugh. yeah, I don't want to go on and on. I just like. I just think what it's, it's important for people to realize what it means to be a reptile rescue. Um, if you cannot provide better than what you're taking this animal from, then you're not a reptile rescue. Uh, what you've done is just move one animal from one bad situation into another. Um, but you know, if you are truly about these animals, you're gonna have. You're going to invest in, in these rescues, and, and it's not, rescuing is not a profitable business. Um, you know, it's in, oh, look at that big yawn. It requires, um, 
you know, it, it requires you investing and it requires you doing a lot of work to convince other people to invest in your cause. Otherwise, you're just uh, spending a lot of time taking in animals that you can't actually properly provide for or that you're just really like breaking your bank to take care of, which is not, a, you know, if that's something you're capable of doing, if you can do it without the help of, of other people, great. Um, but just know that to open an official and get started an official reptile uh, rescue or any type of rescue, you got to have an initial investment in it yourself before uh, you can even expect people to uh, join you on that because people are not just going to give their money away to, without knowing that you yourself have invested a lot in making sure that these animals are taken care of and knowing that you're a real person, that you're a genuine, uh, caring person. So, yeah, I'm just saying, if you are one of those people that are like, oh, I rescued uh, an animal, did you? Did you rescue it? Did you take it from a home that it didn't have adequate care um, and put it into a home where the care is uh, adequate and uh, is good for the animal? Or did you just repeat the cycle for that particular animal? And if you are trying to start a reptile expo, or expo, I don't know why I keep saying that, a reptile uh, rescue, well... Are you starting a reptile rescue or are you hoarding animals that you're not quite capable of taking care of uh, because you kind of financially expected other people to help you with that? Um, and that's not the way reptile rescues go. Uh, not in the beginning. Not in the beginning. In the beginning, it's a lot of personal investment. Um, you know, there's not a lot of outside uh, money coming in for a reptile rescue. So, anyway... That's all, guys. I don't want to keep rambling. Just wanted to talk a little bit about that. I saw that video this morning and just really wanted to just kind of touch on that because, you know, it is hard. And it's uh, it's it can be frustrating when you don't feel like you got a lot of people supporting that kind of cause. Um, but, you know, our community is still growing and it's still reasonably small in the grand scheme of things. So, um, you know, if, if a reptile rescue is something that you wanted to do then you yourself have to just go ahead and invest in that um, and build up your own uh, your own rescue history and get your own like credits built up because people, like I said, are not just giving money away to anybody. So you got to prove to them that you're somebody worth giving money to to rescue these animals, that you're knowledgeable um, and not just like impulsively taking on a bunch of animals. So anyway, you guys, you guys take care. Love yourselves. Love your reptiles. Love your loved ones. And you guys, keep spreading those herbs. Take care, everyone. PWR out.